Welcome to SAT TV's news. I'm Shana Esprit, your presenter. Among the major developments, Dominican native arrested in the UK on drug charges. Antigua police charge Italian national with ex-wife's murder. Nelson Mandela's condition unchanged, still serious. And in sports, All Saints has secured the last semi-final spot in the 2013 DFA's All-Island League. Details of these will follow. Me say we just get the remedy for the pain on them. Me just get the remedy for bad mind and jealousy. Who have you seen me dead? Me just get the remedy, Sock TV. Jamie say, Jamie say. You don't know a Javinche you watching Sock TV. Lord, is it? Straight triple O's. On Sunday, June 8th, members of the Grand Bay Catholic Church protested after their parish priest, Father Reginald Lafleur, was sent on administrative leave as directed by His Excellency Bishop Gabriel Malzier. Allegedly, Bishop Malzier made this decision after learning that an unclosed woman was the victim of abuse by the priest 19 years ago whilst he served in the parish of Portsmouth. Our parish priest is not going anywhere. How can you take actions before getting all the facts? Were some of the views shared by parishioners. to contact His Excellency proved futile, it is alleged that the unnamed woman was sent to Trinidad and Tobago for therapy commendations of the bishop. It has been said, however, that he has agreed that investigations needed to continue for at least another month. A board appointed by Bishop Malzair has been investigating the matter since January this year. However, names of members of that board have yet to be revealed. One bishop I have, 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 And in other stories, Mr. Sergi Okipinti from the neighboring island of Martinique arrived at Dominica on Sunday 9th June via kite surfing to share his amazing story and encourage all Dominicans that there is nothing that cannot be done once you put your heart into it. On January 24th, 2011, Mr. Ochipinti was traveling south of Martinique on a motorcycle and three days later woke up in the hospital with an amputated arm and multiple fractures resulting from a road collision. Doctors informed his family that he only had a 20% chance of survival and if he lived, he would never walk again. However, through perseverance and a lot of therapy, Sergei is now a professional kite surfer who is on a quest to prove that people with disabilities can excel through sports and to open up an avenue for others living with any disability. In March of 2013, he started this project to travel from Martinique to St. Martin, which will take a minimum of seven phases. Many sponsors have come on board to Sergei's quest, including the French group France Televisions and the sports magazine Kite Surfing Magazine. This project is of immeasurable importance to me. I want to prove to myself, but also for people with disabilities, to show them anything is possible when we are driven by passion, determination, and most importantly, desire. I wish through this challenge to bring hope and prove that disability is not an obstacle to live life to the fullest and fulfill your dreams. 
These were the words of Sergei Okchibinti. We wish him well on his quest. And in more news, Father Elton John Nata, who was ordained on Friday, June 7th, said one of his main priorities is to work relentlessly to encourage as many youth as possible to join the faith. After being a teacher for several years, he feels an obligation to reach out to the youth by presenting his sermons to integrate technology into the word and worship. And I think that in today's society, a priest should be with the young people who live in the society, walking in the neighborhood, you know, um, walking the streets, you know, engaging in discussion, you know, and seeing, bringing the priest in a different light than back in the days. So in that way, a young people can say, yes, this is a, a good person. Because he believes that we have to market the church differently. Just as a businessman promotes his business, the priests have to promote their ministry and make it more attractive. I don't believe that um, the church is a little more irrelevant to young people. This is, I mean, church is not so much a building, I guess it's much your, your action, how do you go out. So I might not be in a building, you know, but I can be out with the young people and see myself, you know, reaching young people in a different, not so much in the, in the, in the building, but on the wayside, you know. Confirmation by the newly ordained father states that the Catholic Church has a shortage of priests and more men in the church serve as deacons. Hence, he is excited about taking up the challenge to show the positive aspects that being a priest can have on the men in society. Many times there's a negative stigma about the priest, and, and this, is not, this is not so much so. It's a very, very um, interesting ministry where you give yourself, give your life, and it can gain much more, much more than what you know, the world gives you. Subsequent to an accident that almost ended his life, he decided to join a religious order called the Congregation of the Most Holy Redeemer, beginning his journey on becoming a priest. In other news, following months of investigations by French authorities, police in Guadeloupe have reported that 51-year-old Dominican drug lord Mr. Curtis Richards, better known as Shakes, has been arrested. Mr. Richards, the owner of the All Nations restaurant located in Newtown, was detained upon arrival at the Gatwick Airport in London on Wednesday, June 5, 2013. His arrest followed what the French authorities are calling an intense investigation into drug trafficking between Guadeloupe and Dominica, which concluded last weekend when 46 kilograms of cocaine and 60 kilograms of cannabis as well as 92,000 euros in cash was seized by French police. Five Dominicans and one Guadeloupean were apprehended recently after a boat coming from Dominica was spotted on a beach in Guadeloupe, dropping off its cargo. Their investigations later led to the arrest of alleged drug lord. According to the arrest warrant, French police say their investigations revealed that over the past few months, there was a transfer of more than 160 kilograms of cocaine with a straight value of close to EC 10 million and hundreds of kilograms of cannabis were transferred between the two islands. Mr. Richards, who is the presumed leader of a vast drug network operation between Guadeloupe and Dominica, was arrested under a European arrest warrant. In more stories, on Saturday, June 8th, the Dominica Football Association launched Grassroots, a new sporting program which focuses on children's football abilities. Director of the program, Mr. Jerome Badwill, feels that this year's platform will offer a gateway to improve football throughout our island. The young people before us here this morning are our future in football, and I'm pleased that this opportunity here was created today we will be able to see our young budding talent um, um, emerge among our young folks this morning. So let's all make this um, session this morning an enjoyable and fun one. But this is what football is all about. And I'm sure new friendships will begin here. It's an opportunity for the young people to interact. And um, most of all, um, it's going to be an enjoyable day for us. Youth officer Mr. John Joseph strongly believes that despite one's gender, ethnicity or social background, everyone has the ability to play football. This grassroots program aims to bring football to children aged 6 to 12 all over the island. Fair play, team spirit and camaraderie are just a few of the many values that playing football 
can bring. Having fun is the most important thing in playing football. And coaches must teach the game and not victory at all costs. Mr. Joseph also made mention of several individuals in the local community who dedicate their time in assisting the players. For instance, a grassroots program can lead to early identification of, of talent which can be harnessed by the local uh, representatives in the local academies and clubs, which in turn can help the school and the national teams. This program is aimed to introduce the sport of football to all boys and girls, but, in, but it, is, it is left to the local academies, groups, clubs and teams to continue to make football fun, exciting and worthwhile for, for, for the young, young kids. Whilst while teaching the proper and fun, proper fundamentals for young players to develop both on and off the field. The grassroots program is intended to transform football to a different yet higher level. The director says the sport is very enjoyable and there are numerous benefits to gain from participating in the game. And so what we intended to do is to, to go to the various loca localities and to have the neighboring communities come to a central position. So this is what is in essence happening here at Grand Bay this, this, this morning. We have um, um, students from Bagatelle, we have Ponty Shell Souf here. And um, this year is not going to end here really. Um, at some point in time we intend to go to, to, the, to the north at Portsmouth. Portsmouth we will be able to, to engage a number of the communities in that area. Also we are hoping that we can go to Casaloos at some point in time. <laughs> In other stories, Charlene Elise, a representative of the organization of the Kalinago Indigenous Nation Developers, speaks on the importance of appreciating the history, heritage, and culture of the Kalinago people. If it wasn't for the establishment of the Reserve 100 10 years ago, it is possible to say that today the Kalinago territory would not be existing and the people would have been dispersed all over Dominica. She believes the establishment of the Kalinago territory has kept the people together and will continue to do so for a long time. We can almost be sure that in the next 100 years to come that you will be able to find Kalinago more pure blood within the territory. And yes, we have Kalinagos all around Dominica, but we want them to identify this and be proud of the little bit of the, how much they have, the percentage that they have of Kalinago within them and we want them to come out and support it. Feel proud of who you are. Miss Elise says the same way others are proud to be descendants of Africa, the Kalinago people should adapt that sense of pride and patriotism to their culture and who they are. We want the young generation to know what their history was, where they are journeyed towards, and why they should preserve the territory. The, ta the Kalinago people and the culture should be preserved, she added. In more news, Minister of Housing, Lands and Telecommunications, Honorable Reginald Austri, hosted a sports day event in Cottage on Saturday, June 8th. Mr. Austri acknowledged that this affair will include various games and activities was organized in remembrance of their fallen heroine, Marvelyn Panthier. Every Sunday before the Feast of St. Anthony, they will host a memorial sports day in the name and honor of her. So every Sunday, before the feast, our sports day will be in the memory of Marvelyn and will make it bigger and better. I want to thank most of all the folks from Bellevue who have come here to join us today for this what they call a fun day. This is not a competition day and the little rain fall, thank God for the rain. I want to see the big ladies fall down and roll in the mud. By the time we leave here today, everybody must be dirty. Captain of the Northern Tremors Rounders team had this to say about Mrs. Panthier. 
Marvlin began playing the team, playing the game, sorry, as a little girl in Montsoleil, always practicing with the much bigger girls. She lived in the immediate vicinity of the playing field, so she would always be present at practice sessions. If she was called home by her parents while she was batting, she had a plan. She would spin her body, swing that left hand, hitting the ball over a nearby shop into those long backs way below the houses, so that the fielders would spend much time searching for the ball, giving her sufficient time to run home, then come back in time to bat. The Clifton Village Council received special recognition for their long, hard and dedicated work throughout the years. Three years. And after three years, we'll find your trophies. So it means that the, the team which wins next year will receive that trophy. So you keep it for one year, the next team get it, the next team get it. After three years, the team that have it will keep it and will get some new trophies. Congratulations. G job well done. Great work. Thank you very much, Honorable Austri, for this um, wonderful gift to us. And I just hope that um, every team will work hard enough so that everyone can get a trophy. But I want Clifton to keep it for three years, eh? Yes. I want all the kids for three years. Okay, then. This has been the local segment of the news. Coming up next, regional highlights.